So let's talk about grow lights. They're gonna be your top priority when starting seeds indoors because plants need to have a good source of light so that they can adequately photosynthesize. And honestly, when I was looking for my grow lights, I found it to be a little tricky. There are many, many different kinds of lights. So for starting seedlings, I opted for these shop lights with LED daylight bulbs. If you already own fluorescent lights, you could try those as well, but I would not suggest incandescent because they get too hot. So trying to figure out exactly what bulb was confusing to me at first. So when I went to the store, I wrote 6,500K on my hand as a reminder that natural daylight has a correlated color temperature of 6,500K. K meaning Kelvin, that's what it's measured in. So on your lights, it's gonna tell you a certain number K. The closer you get to 65, the better. This one's only 4,000 K. And I tried this one and it's not so good. So when you're Googling grow lights, one of the top pages that come up had the advice of getting one of the daylight bulbs and one of the cool bulbs because different stages of growth in a plant need different wavelengths of light. So I did that. I got a cool and I got a warm. And I put a cool bulb on one side and a warm bulb on the other side, just like was suggested. I went ahead and swapped some out so you could see. So this is the cooler, this is the cooler light, and this is the bright light. And so they even look different. But what happened was the seedlings that were under the 4,000 K bulbs were growing towards the 5,000 K bulbs and I had to keep switching the trays. So it was not good advice, but I didn't know any better. So now I have swapped out all my lights with the 5,000 K bulbs. Now, when I originally went to the store, I had every intention of buying all my bulbs that said 6,500 K because I thought it would be easy to find them. I mean, it said all over the internet, that's what you need to have. Couldn't find them anywhere. But I did find out later, actually kind of recently, that I could order them and have them shipped to the store. So if you cannot find what you're looking for, just ask somebody. Yeah. For some of my grow lights, I have purchased the light fixtures separately, and then I put the LED bulbs in it. This was a fluorescent light fixture, but it was made so that you could um, adjust it to fit the LED. Then I have some other lights where you purchase it and the LED bulb is already in the fixture. I don't care for this one specifically because of how it hangs. I just talked about the lights looking different. So one of the numbers on your light boxes is gonna be lumens. You don't have to worry anything about lumens. Lumens have absolutely nothing to do with plants. It's just how bright the human eye sees the light. So lumens, lux, nothing to do with plants whatsoever will make no difference. It has to do with how your light eyes perceive the light. Kelvin. Kelvin, as close to 6,500 Kelvin as you can find, 6,500 K is what daylight is like. Now, I also grow plants from seed all the way up to fruiting. I grow peppers inside. I grow tomatoes inside. Those plants need a different light. If you think of the sunlight as a rainbow, and each color represents a different wavelength of light, the blue colors are what is needed for when they're starting to grow for chlorophyll absorption, photosynthesis, and growth. But then when they're fruiting and flowering, they need the red wavelength of light because that wavelength pr promotes flowering and budding. These little guys just don't have what it takes. As it is when I'm growing seedlings, I have them pretty close to the top of the plants to get nice, sturdy, green, luscious little seedlings. If they're too far away, the seedlings will spring up trying to get closer to that light. When you have a full grown plant, these just are not adequate. There was a second number I put on my hand when I went shopping for grow lights for the first time. And that was 400 to 900 par, P-A-R, 400 to 900 par. I didn't really understand what par was, but I knew it wasn't the essential part of what the bigger plants were going to need. I now understand it a little bit better. PAR stands for photosynthetically active radiation. It's the range of light that plants use to photosynthesize. Like I just talked about a minute ago, the, the blue colored lights were 
in the four or 500 range and the red color lights are in the six to 800 range. So a full spectrum light covers all of those. I assumed that these light bulbs, any light bulbs I found would have par something on them to inform me what I was purchasing. I was dead wrong. I could not find a single light in the store that had a par rating on it. This is the first grow light that I bought for um, flowering and fruiting plants, which has a par rating of 53. Par slash PPF. I didn't understand what that meant, but 53, I was looking for 400 to 900. So this didn't make sense. And I couldn't find that number anywhere on this box. I did later Google the brand and find more specifications online. And it did have a par rating. The par rating on it online showed 449 to 663. I really didn't know what I was doing, but I was at Home Depot. Home Depot is really good about taking things back. So my plan was I would go home, take the light, grow my plants. If they didn't actually produce fruit like they said or the plants didn't prosper, I would just take the light back and get my money back. But they grew great, so I didn't have to do that. This light does not get very warm, so that's very beneficial for summertime or if you want to keep um, the room cool so that your seedlings or plants don't overheat. It was about $65.00. The problem I had with this light from Home Depot was that as the tomatoes would grow up, I, I, I grew peppers under it just fine, but the tomatoes would grow up and the bottoms of the plants would start to be sickly. It just did not have enough power to reach down and give enough light to the whole plant. So I had to go shopping for another kind of light. And that's when I found these bad boys. So how I came to know what to buy here. These came off of Amazon, but there are literally a million grow lights on Amazon. I would have no idea what to get. However, I came across somebody who grows medical herb, if you know what I mean, and this is the light that he used. So he sent me um, a link to it so that I could um, know which one to purchase. This was $112. I have purchased three of them since I purchased this first one because this one works really, really well. Um, it has, both of these lights have different settings so you can have it just in the blue light phase, the red light phase, or just a clear bright or white, whatever you need. I tend to just put all three of them on at the same time because I still don't know that much about grow lights, but I do know this one works. This one I have grown everything under. This one does produce a little bit of heat, not like an unsafe amount of heat, but it warms up the area which in the winter is actually really helpful to those heat loving plants like, like, like tomatoes and peppers. So I actually find that a bonus. So right now it's a blue light stage. Then I've added red so that this would be flowering and fruiting. And I took off the blue, so now it's all red. But I like to put both of them on because I don't still really know what I'm doing, but I know it works. So that's three different kinds of lights for three different pur purposes. This one and the Home Depot light are basically for the same purpose, but this one's more powerful so I can grow so I can grow plants that grow taller under it under it really well. These are just for seed starting, the regular LEDs. These fixtures were 20 something dollars. Then I did buy chains to hook them up on this rack, which is currently full of still sunflowers that we dry out for the chickens. I was gonna clean this place up first before I did this video, but I thought, who knows when that's gonna happen. But I just wanted to get this information out there because I know a lot of you are looking to start to start seeds again and, and may not know what to use for grow lights. And um, it's actually not that hard. So here's what you look for. You look for as close to 6,500K as you can find. And if you can find a par rating between 400, 7, 800, the par ratings for these were stated online and they're from 430 to 740. So they do go higher on the flowering and veg wavelength of light. So I don't know if that's the difference. They're, they're just more powerful too. So there's also something to be said about how much light is being emitted from the fixture per second, but that's just a little bit too complicated. So let's just stick with this. Try to get LEDs. I know they cost a little bit more, but they don't put out the heat like fluorescence and incandescence don't even do those. If you already have fluorescence, use fluorescence. But these are really cheap to run. 
and they run a super long time. So there's that. You will need to place them like my, this is from last, the end of last spring. My starts were up here. I will be lowering these way down. That's why I have the chains up so I can take them up and down. So 6,500K, you're looking for 6,500K, okay? Then for the grow lights, you're looking for a par value if you can find it between like 400, 700. I will leave a link to this. Currently, there's no affiliate links. I don't have an affiliate with anybody. That could change sometime. I don't know. But I'll leave a link to the ones I bought on Amazon. I'll leave the link to the stuff that I bought on Home Depot. So you can see the brands and everything. But if you're going to buy a light like on Amazon, I would say read the reviews. I know there's some negative reviews about these, but I have three of them and they've worked fantastically well for me. Um, I would read the reviews or if you know somebody who grows um, indoors, then ask them what they're using and get something like that. $112 is really inexpensive for a good grow light, but yet it's not inexpensive. I mean, it's a chunk of change, right? Also with this one, this one has a footprint of a max of five by five. That means I can have um, a square of five by five of plants and they'll all get adequate light. This one, it's only two by two. You know, I can get a few peppers under there to grow up to be big boys and girls and give me their fruit. And around the edges, down around the edges, then I, I grow greens. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Hopefully that helped somebody know what to go get for indoor growing. Hopefully. I know it's confusing. Or at least it's just confusing to me. Maybe my brain is just like, what? But really just looking for the two things. You're looking for the Calvin and you're looking for the par. Um, these lights will never grow a tomato to full fruit. These lights can grow anything you want. So look at your budget. What do you? What can you spend? What are you willing to spend? Um, I'm hoping these last a long, long time. I've had them for a while. They're still going good. I've had all of these for a while. They're still going good. And that's all I've got for today. So until next time, see ya.